So I'm back with part 16 of my collection videos. This is the remainder of the science fiction fantasy section. And then uh, after this, I will move on to, um, I guess I'll do my drama section next. So, all right. First up is uh, Franklin. It's a bizarre little film. Uh, this guy just constantly walking around like the Invisible Man. Uh, it's an interesting film. Uh, I'm not sure it holds up to multiple watches, but it's it's pretty interesting. If you haven't seen it, I'd recommend it. Arrow release of Buckaroo Banzai. This is a classic film that a lot of you grew up, grew up with as well as I did. And uh, I thought it was... Um, for its time, it actually, I don't think, was received really well. But I think it's become a cult classic. Great release by Arrow, by the way. Here's a film that I think bombed when it was when it came out. And it's subject to reappraisal, and that is Zardos. Sean Connery. Uh, very strange, <laughs> very strange film. Um... Uh, all kinds of um, prehistoric, prehistory, medieval almost elements. Um, what you've got here is a band of people that worship Zardoz, which is this floating statue. And uh, it turns out that Zardoz is a fake. Uh, very interesting film about the. It's, a, it's kind of a a science fiction version of the haves and the have-nots because the people behind this Zardos are the haves and they're trying to keep the keep down and keep separated from what they believe is the lower classes led by Sean Connery um, keep them away from you know class distinction it's a caste it's a basically like the Indian uh, India it's a caste system uh, I think the film really resonates well today uh, but for some reason, it just it just it just was a complete flop when it came out. But I highly recommend Zardos. Well, we're in this era release as usual is awesome. Zone Troopers. This is a fun film. Kino release. Uh, I would recommend this as well. I enjoyed it. I've got an old DVD of Earth vs. the Flying Saucers, Columbia Pictures, quite a bit of special features on it, Ray Harryhausen classic. And then I've got a DVD box of the King Kong set, which has got uh, King Kong, Son of Kong, and Mighty Joe Young. All these now, of course, you can get on Blu-ray. Uh, Blu Canadian feature, Neptune Factor. The cover art and the advertising was the, the kind of the best thing about this film. The film was just, um, the concept is good, but when you got to the point where you're going to see these creatures, I mean, they just, it was terrible. They <laughs> And they talk about it a lot in the commentaries and the special features that, uh, you know, they filmed basically these uh, domestic fish. You know, it looks it looked it just looked terrible. It looked like the uh, the ending was just horrible. I mean, the payoff with all the sea creatures, deep sea creatures, ended up being fish you'd see in a in a somebody's home water tank. It's it was laughable to be honest. Now here is a unusual film that uh, Hammer. This is kind of a late entry sci-fi film from Hammer with Terrence Fisher as director, director, and uh, yeah, got an audio, it's a Kino release with an audio commentary. Definitely, if you're a Hammer fan and you're a Terrence Fisher fan, you need to pick that up. Here's a Blu-ray of Invisible Invaders. Uh, John Carradine stars in this 60-minute quickie. Uh, another Kino release. I would again say that. Um, Unless you're a sci-fi fan, this is probably not something you're going to like. It's an early, early 50s cheapy. Uh, but I grew up with this kind of stuff. And the audio commentary is worth buying it. 
some Italian schlock, and that is Contamination from Arrow. Once again, I mean, Arrow's releases, with the exception of Phantasm, have just been off-the-cuff awesome. Off-the-cuff awesome. It's a great, great release, DVD, Blu-ray. Highly recommend it. Next up is a film that uh, gets a lot of obsession and cult praise, but I'm not sure I see it, and that is Donnie Darko. I've watched it a couple times, and it's a good movie, but I don't I don't see what all the uproar is about as far as the obsession that people go with how wonderful the film is. It's, it's okay, but not something I want to rewatch. And then that kind of same goes for the subsequent follow-up, S. Darko. All right, it's okay. Now, here's a couple of films that I love. Double feature of Vill the original Village of the Damned and Children of the Damned. Two excellent, excellent British fantasy films about space children. Love these films. Highly recommended. Not as I'm not as big a fan of the uh, the remake. J.J. Abrams Super 8. Like this film a lot. Uh, like the concept. Uh, excellent and engaging watch. This is another one that's a great movie. I'm just not sure that, at least for me, that I that would, it sustains multiple watching. But I, I enjoyed it a lot. Here's a um, a double feature of two uh, Russian science fiction films, Night Watch and Day Watch. Uh, I like these films a lot. Uh, time time travel, uh, vampires. Uh, yeah, it's got a lot of and a lot of action thrown into it. Uh, very interesting films. Highly recommend this. Then I picked up uh, at some point. I picked up in the last couple of years, Snowpiercer which is another excellent, excellent science fiction film coming out of Asia uh, about a train that's basically the only place, supposedly the only place that really humanity still exists is on this train that never stops. Cool movie. Here's a film that I grew up with, uh, Logan's Run. I saw this in the theaters. Uh, basically, it's about a civilization in the future that, um, uh, you know, people have a defined lifespan. And when they reach the end of that lifespan, they send these, uh, I don't know, hit men basically to, to take them out. And you've got this, uh, this little, each person has this little blinking light when their time is up. Interesting film. I've got a couple copies of this. I've got uh, this old snapper case of Forbidden Planet. And then I've got this double DVD feature, double set. that's just got all the loaded with special features. I mean, this is probably, you know, when you talk about classic science fiction in your collection, I mean, I don't know that anybody can be without Forbidden Planet. Robbie the Robot. Uh, the, here we're up with another film that I think is uh, better than the original, although I love the original. The 1978 film Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Donald Sutherland. Love this film. I thought it was an excellent, excellent reboot. Highly recommended. <clears throat> Snapper Case of the Valley of Guanji. Uh, another Ray Harryhausen film. This has got a Blu-ray release, but I haven't upgraded yet. Uh, fun film. You know, if you like One Million Years BC, stuff like that, stop motion animation, you're going to like it. Uh, here's a DVD of, um, I want to say this, I think this is a press disc. Yeah. Curse of the Faceless Man. Pretty fun little 50s, more of a horror movie than a science fiction movie, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. 
And there's a, it's got a, uh, it's got a Blu-ray release, which is in my watch list. I got to pick that up. One of my favorite science fiction films of all time, and this is another one I saw in a theater. Uh, and I think it's probably Richard Dreyfuss's one, well, certainly he's done a lot of great things, Jaws being one of them, but I think this is his best role, and that is Close Encounters. Love this film. Who doesn't love this film? This is a top ten science fiction film. Great. This is a, this um, disc has uh, some pretty interesting commentaries, and it's got a 90-minute um, making of. Cheese classic, Dolph Lundgren and Dark Angel. This is a fun, fun film. I mean, loaded with action, uh, 80s cheese, awesome stuff. I've got the original Invaders from Mars, which is, of course, remade by or rebooted by Toby Hooper in the 80s. But, yeah, this is the original. It's a fun movie. It came from Beneath the Sea, old DVD. I've got the Blu-ray now of that. I think I showed that earlier. Yeah, that's in, that was earlier. And then the blue um, DVD of 20 Million Years BC, which also has a Blu-ray release. Here's another DVD of The Monster That Challenged the World. I've got the Blu-ray on it as well. Another copy of The Crawling Eyes. I got two copies of this if anybody is interested. Uh, Forrest Tucker and the Crawling Eye. Good movie. Here's a kind of a lame movie. This is The Sword of Xantine. It's uh, kind of a shot on video fantasy sword and sandal film. It's all right. Colossus of New York DVD. And uh, this has also got a Blu-ray. It's amazing how many of these old cheesy... 50s science fiction movies are, are getting Blu-rays. Escape from New York. Love this film. Kurt Russell's great in it. Uh, classic movie. Must I think this is a must-own. And then finally, a movie that's probably not talked about a lot, but I like it a lot. Very intelligent film along the lines of... A, uh, conspiracy theory films, a drama to strain, those type of things, and that is Coma. Saw this in the theater and loved it. Uh, and I think this is a film that, that holds up to repeat viewings as well. Uh, you, I definitely could do worse. You could definitely do worse with your time in this film. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, check it out. I, I recommend it. All right, guys, that is it for part 16. And that concludes, really pretty much concludes the science fiction shelf that I've got in my closet. Um, so now we've got, what do we got left? We've got drama. Uh, we've got some, a section of foreign language films predominantly uh, occupied by all of Fassbender's films. And then I've got a, uh, what I call a schlock section. Uh, just really bad, bad movies, cheesy movies that, really don't don't fit in the other category for me anyway i just call it schlock um and then i've got all my unwatched pile that i gotta go through so still a long way to go um, as far as making these little videos but i appreciate you watching thanks